Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstum, a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome back to another one of my Saturday photo chats. So, I want to talk about the evolution of photography and how I think photography doesn't work anymore. Photography used to be something that we did while we were with friends and family, and then we could wait to get that film developed a few weeks or months later. And then we could look at photographs and we could relive those special moments. But we don't do that anymore. Now it seems like photographs, they're not even photographs, they're just glances on a phone. And before we even have a chance to finish experiencing the experience we're in, we're already sharing photos and sending them to the people who aren't with us and even showing them to each other. So they're kind of done. To me, sometimes photography doesn't feel like it matters right now when it comes to the way it's used by most people. And I know film photographers who print, we're a special class of enthusiasts who actually understand the need for printing, but a lot of people aren't printing. A lot of people are just making images for a glance and a swipe, maybe a like. I was at a birthday party for a friend's one-year-old and I brought a camera. I shot some telephoto lens photos of the baby and the parents and the other people who were invited. And I toned them in black and white. I actually shot them with a digital camera. I toned them in black and white. And I wanted to either send them a small little web gallery or a, a little print book of those photographs. And it was a few days later and I was looking at these photographs and I'm like, in all of the photographs, everybody's got a phone up and they're all shooting. And I'm like, do the photos I make even matter? If I send them to them, will they go, yeah, we just saw it. We all saw it. Everybody saw it before they even left the building. We're done. And I didn't send them to them. And I might make a print and I might gift it to them when I see them for dinner sometime soon. But I didn't have the interest in getting them the photographs a few days later when typically I would send them, hey, here's some photos from that event. Because there were so many people with phones that it made it felt like it was already covered. The event was already documented and seen and everybody saw it in real time. There's no need to see it again. And I thought, you know, the only thing that would be good is if I could get it to them in a year or two. When the baby is much older, when they've forgotten that moment, and then I give it to them and then they go, oh, look how small baby is. And maybe there's some kind of a going back in time because time will have helped them forget it. But we used to have the forgetfulness as a, a regular feature of photography. Waiting for that film to get developed. I just developed film the other day and I knew I had shot some photographs just the day before when I was with some friends, but I didn't remember everything that was on the raw. And when the film comes out and you're seeing the photographs, whether through a print or a scan, you're looking at them going, oh yeah, I remember that. That was when I was with that, that waitress who said, oh, I really love that camera. I want to talk about that. And then I ended up saying, oh, let me get your picture. And then here, oh, here's that picture. Oh, what a great picture. I'll make sure when I see her at the local pub or restaurant, wherever it was, I'll make sure I get her a copy of that. She's young. She probably doesn't have a film photograph of herself. And it was a treat that she was responding to the camera. And we had a little conversation about photography. But that photograph was a surprise because I had forgotten that I had made it. It wasn't made in real time and shared and sent and distributed and done. Like many people are making photographs these days. So to me, Time is an integral part of 
what photography was and to me what it still is. You've heard me say here, Gary Winogrand said to another photographer working with him in New York, hey, if we're shooting on the street, shoot the best photos you can shoot today. They only get better with time. And I suspect all of my photographs will be more valued as time goes on, but I don't really see the value in them in the present moment, not certainly two or three days after the event, when they all were shooting pictures, including the family members, including the parents. My photos might be fine, but they have a lot of photos. And I don't know if they see that difference when there are so many photographs to look at and process. Do they notice these are black and white and these have a little specialness to them? They have a good compositions and special moments? I don't know. I think that there's a quantity of photographs that have made it so that they get diluted into too many. And even the great ones in an event like that are kind of overlooked. Yeah, okay, so what? Yeah, we were there. We saw it. I have pictures right here. So photography has changed, and I hope it changes back, or at least continues to evolve into something more than, hey, look where I'm at. Hey, look at that. Hey, yeah, I saw it too. Okay, now we're all done. Nobody will ever see it again. I don't think that that's, I don't believe that the cloud is the magic answer for storing all of these photographs. I just read a New York Times story that said that hackers are constantly accessing the cloud, constantly trying to break down systems on clouds because that's where a lot of data lives. And I just don't think that the digital world is going to, with the billions of photographs being made every day, is going to have any way to archive those and make it so that in 50 years we'll have a print like those prints that we have from our parents and grandparents, those tin types that exist from the 1800s. They wouldn't exist if they weren't printed on tin. But if we don't make photographs, and right now most people aren't, I don't think that there will be much left to go back to. Because even if they did exist on some cloud, navigating it and trying to find anything, I think would be too, I think it will be too difficult. I can't find photographs from the early 2000s that I'm looking for. And I'm pretty good at archiving and managing files because it's my business. And there are photographs I can think of right now that I can't find. And I've looked and I've done searches and I've searched older hard drives. And I don't know if there are in older computers in the hard drives that are buried in them that don't boot up anymore, but photography, we have to make prints, but it's the only way we're going to make photographs that will last. And maybe those photographs from that birthday party will be valuable to them in a little while when they've forgotten the photographs, when they haven't been inundated with so many photographs because they were there. And that's the way photography is. That's the way photography may be going. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. I welcome your comments. If you can support, hit the Patreon. Thanks to all my supporters. I appreciate you. I will be back next time. We'll talk more photography. As always, here's to good life.